Good evening and welcome to tonight's episode of Straight Talk with me, Sifiso Matlang. Radical economic transformation, many say, is a buzzword, but it's government's renewed approach for common growth and allowing Africans to finally be a part of South Africa's economy. But this has not come in easy. Widely contested, many say radical economic transformation is just an essence for more corruption. I'm seated next to the leader of Afri Forum, uh, Mr. Ernest Roots, who comes to dispel many notions on radical economic transformation. Mr. Roots, I welcome you to the show. Thank you. Yeah. It's good to be here. I'm a believer in radical economic transformation. And I want to give you right that the straight talk tonight. Yeah. Uh, radical economic transformation is necessary mm. because it allows black people to finally participate in their, the, the economy of their country, mm. the economy of their land. I don't think in 2017, as a leader of the AFRI Forum, you can say that uh, mm. radical economic transformation is not necessary. Mm. Well, once again, if, if, if you talk about if we talk about radical economic transformation, it's like talking about racism or democracy or human rights. It's 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 or equality even uh, or freedom. It all it all boils down to really what do you mean when you say that. So w what does it mean in practice? So when you say you support radical economic transformation because black people must be uplifted, I can say to you I agree and Afriform agrees wholeheartedly. But the question is what does it, radical economic transformation actually mean? Does it mean, for example, that we are viola violating the right to private property, that we are implementing policies that will uh, not boost the econ econ economy but destroy the economy? Then, then that's really where, where the difference is coming. So if the idea is, as I said, uh, we must boost the economy, we must uplift people from, pov from poverty and unemployment, yes, I don't, think, I don't think there's anybody who disagrees. But how do you do that? I think that's the problem. Afri Forum is a group of Afrikaners, should I say, or is a pro africana rights group in this country that seems to oppose a lot of the work that government does. Mm. Uh, many claim that the Afri Forum is a racist group, is anti-black. Mm. Uh, doesn't that explain why you don't believe in radical economic transformation? Well, once again, racism is also a term. What do you really mean when you say racist? But Afri Forum is certainly not a racist group. Uh, Afriforum has existed for 10, 11 years. We've issued uh, thousands of press statements on various issues. We've never said one thing that's racist. Uh, we've never said one thing that uh, is um, uh, denying the dignity of black people uh, and so forth. What we have been doing as Afriforum is to say, is to, to to push issues that we believe are important, that would be important to move this country forward. Uh, but we are concerned that when you disagree with government or when you say, listen, we don't think black economic empowerment is working or we believe the debate on white privilege is not really the biggest debate that we should be having in this country, then you automatically label the racist. So that's the irony about racism is to be a racist or to be labeled a racist, it's supposed to be the worst insult that you can get. I mean, what can be worse than being a racist? But maybe you haven't read the statistics, Mr. Roots. Uh, mm. the, the majority of people in this country are black people mm. who are still living in poverty. Yeah. Uh, white supremacy still exists in this country. It is white people who still own 80% of the land in this country. Mm. How do you say that South Africa doesn't need mm. radical economic transformation when yeah. the JSE is still owned by white people, 97% of it well, is still in, in, in white hands. No, well, both those figures you just gave are incorrect. No, uh, no, no, they can't be. 80% 80 80 of the land in this country is in white hands. And, and you say it, this is farming land. But if it's farming land, why don't white people just give black people the land and say, you were the first settlers of the land. Why don't you take the land back and use it? Well... As I said, those two figures are not true. There's no source that, that has ever said that 80% of the land is owned by white people. There's no source that's ever said that 97% uh, of the JSE is owned by white people. The only, what has been said is that uh, there was some, I think a study that said 3% is owned by black individuals. Now the conclusion is, oh, so 97% must be owned by white people, which is not true. There are companies and trusts and so forth uh, in, in the JSE. And, and I think on the issue of land ownership, it's not that simple. Um, 
it's not that simple. Once again, when, when we're talking about radical economic transformation, the, the notion is we must boost the economy. We must uplift people from poverty. Minister, Minister Ayanda Dodo uh, uh, wrote the article uh, Return yeah, the Land to, to, to Its Rightful Owners. Mm -hmm. You responded to her and said uh, land expropriation is a fallacy, yes. that uh, black people cannot inherit the land. The land should not be expropriated no. because... Uh, government has failed to expropriate land in the 23 years of democracy. I mean, you can sit here and say, my statistics are wrong. Mm. I have it on record. You wrote back to her. If mm. you really feel that uh, black people in this country should inherit their land, why did you respond and uh, oppose everything that she said? Well, I actually oppose two things. There's two problems with the whole land reform debate. The one is all the available data shows that the vast majority of people in South Africa do not really care about land reform as but much. But it wasn't your land to decide. I but think the problem that you don't understand is it's, it's not your land to decide who needs to expropriate it. Mm. It wasn't the land of settlers who came with Jan van Riebeck. If black people in this country don't know what to do with land, mm. it is their land to decide. I think that's the narrative that... Many white people in this country don't understand. But should we be saying that to black people in the United States, that it's not their country? Well, we don't live in the United States, Mr. Rundt. We, we're talking about South Africa. But would that be racist for someone like Donald Trump? We're talking Trump, about Section 25 of the South African Constitution. Mm. We're not talking about America and Mr. Mm. Donald Trump. Mm. When we discuss radical economic transformation and mm. we discuss expropriation of land mm. in this country and land that has to return to its rightful owners. We're talking mm. about black people. Well, <laughs> well, let me give you this. Um, there was actually a study done that before um, uh, the technology of bore, bore holes, to be able to, to dig bore holes, which came with, uh, with Western influence in South Africa, only 30% of the land in South Africa uh, was livable. It was only a, a possible to live on, to survive on 30% of the land in this country if you didn't have the technology to dig a borehole. Um, so this idea that, uh, and, and, and the whole issue about uh, land ownership is, is, there's all these sweeping statements and broad generalizations about uh, black people seemingly have, having owned everything in South Africa before white people came or before the Great Track. There wasn't the much to own, it was just land. And when we discuss land expropriation, mm. and I think you'll, you'll understand that land is an issue of human dignity. When all black people owned was mm. land, if you took land from them, then you took everything they had. And so when we discuss expropriation and we discuss mm. uh, how land should be reformed, we're not talking about the 1913 Land Act. I think Perhaps even every mm. forum should come to the table and work with government and say, mm. how do we return the land? Yeah, but that's the problem, I think, with the political debate in South Africa is to argue like this, I, I don't think we're being consistent. Uh, because to argue the way that you are arguing now, if you were, once again, if you were to go to Europe and say, make that argument with regards to black people, to say, listen, this is white people's continent, what are you doing here? It would be extremely racist. You would be accused of being a member of the Ku Klux Klan. Uh, if you said that in the United States. Mm -hmm. But in the, in, if it's the other way around, if the target is, is white people and not black people, then it seems to be that you can say pretty much anything. You can say white people are criminals and they have committed genocide and so forth. So, so we have this narrative where, where white people can be accused of virtually anything, uh, and, uh, but saying the same thing about black people would make you a racist. And, and th that's a narrative that we need to break. And it's also, we see that narrative especially on, on the issue of land reform. According to Census 2011, 76.4% uh, of the South African population is black people. That mm. is the, the majority. Mm. And it is the majority who lost the, their land. Uh, shouldn't you come to the table and say, well, let us make amends, because it is not black people who own the land in this country? Well, <laughs> well I think there's, there's a few issues here. The one is, are we talking about, once again, as I've said on ANN7 before, are we talking about restitution or redistribution? In other words, restitution means land was taken from a black person by a white person. We need to fix that. We support that. As you Forum. deny uh, land restitution with or without compensation. No, no, we, we, 
we agree with restitution. We disagree with redistribution. Land expropriation can be given uh, with or without uh, uh, the, the right to remunables. The, the model of winning seller and winning, w willing buyer did not work. But the argument I think many South Africans are raising is that if there's land, and many white people are saying that land is not property land that people can live on, mm. why not give the land to those people to decide what they want to do with it? I think this is the, the, there's a few issues here, but this uh, comes back to the question I asked at the beginning. When we talk about radical economic transformation, are we talking about uplifting people from poverty, or are we talking about chasing out white people and, and putting in black people? Because what you, are t what you are saying now is basically what Robert Mugabe did. Um, so we can say, well, we must implement the policies no, of Robert respect, Mugabe. with respect, you can't compare me to, to Mr. Robert Mugabe. No, no, I'm not comparing yeah. you. I'm just saying I'm, you, I'm you're using the same I'm stating that radical economic transformation should not be looked at as a racial slur, but it should be looked upon as a way to develop the lives of African people. But because if you have land, and I mean land is one of the issues of radical economic transformation, though it uh, focuses widely on, on the economy. But it's allowing black people to participate in this economy, something they've been deprived of by apartheid. The same way black people are participating in the economy of Zimbabwe. Well, black people in, in Zimbabwe still own the land. We're talking about black people in South Africa who have been deprived of economic participation in this country. And I think radical economic uh, 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 transformation. Uh, transformation is the approach to which black people can participate mm. in that economy. They'll make bla uh, black industrialists, you know, uh, land reform, but participation in this economy, land and ownership and property development. I think that's, a, that's not a model that seems to attack white people and tell white people to leave South Africa. It's a model Africa. that attacks black people. Uh, what do you make then of the fact that our own Department of Agriculture has said that 90%, more than 90% of land that's been transferred from white people to black people have failed? It's either been shifted from commercial farming to subsistence farming or to squatter camps. That's government statistics, that these policies are failing. It's failing the economy. It's, uh, it's, it's leading to a decrease in jobs. Uh, people are losing their jobs because of this. So white people can will be able to... Uh, uh, that's not the biggest problem. So the will problem you then is be what, will this, what will the impact with of this the be on black people? Quo of uh, a majority that is without land and a minority that owns land in this country. What I'm, what I'm not, not uh, satisfied with is the fact that the majority of black people in this country do not get proper education, uh, do not get proper training. Uh, we have schools that are completely dysfunctional. And so the education issue is, a, is one of the major problems. And the other issue is economic policy. The policies that our government is implementing is destructive to the economy. It's not allowing people, it's making it very difficult for people to start their own businesses, to start their own farms because of all these government regulation and so forth. The issue is not simply, there's no quick fix for poverty and unemployment. Mm -hmm. We can't say, listen, we're going to um, take whatever this white person owns and give it to, to this black person who doesn't have uh, the same wealth or property. And that's going to solve the problem. Yeah. If it's not, uh, if we don't have proper education and if we don't have proper economic policy, we're doing the exact same thing as Robert I don't think anyone Mugabe. should claim that radical economic uh, and so economic social uh, transformation is going to be an easy job. Uh, it's going to take a lot of time. Well, it's but, easy to destroy yeah, the economy. But, but, but if, you, if they don't begin now, when will it come to pass? I mean, all the deficits of apartheid that have been left in this country, Mr. Roots, I think you can see and understand that these things need to happen. Transformation needs to come. But once again, what do you mean when you say transformation? Do you mean uplifting people from poverty and unemployment? Or do you mean taking the stuff that white people have? Because that's, that's the problem that we have, is that's not solving anything economically. And it's based on, on a misguided approach to... to how the economy work, and, and I think that it comes back to the so-called white privilege um, issue. Um, people who argue about white privilege are not able to differentiate between privilege and achievement. So when a white person has a nice house, mm -hmm. the only possible conclusion in this country can be he has a nice house because he stole something. No, no, I can give you the stats on white supremacy. What are and, they? And, an Oxfam uh, research study shows that white people in this country still make 4% uh, more than men. 
uh, women, you know, are downrodden. Uh, white men in this country still make four times more than their black counterparts. But that's not statistics on white supremacy. I so mean, if, if white men in 2017 mm -hmm. still make more money than black men in this country, so that, is, that is white supremacy. So would you call I mean, Patrick, in, Patrick uh, in a democratic society, in a, in a democratic constitutional democracy, mm. why should white people still earn more than black people? Are, are you saying having wealth makes you a supremacist? No, why, why do white people earn more money than black people? Because they have proper education. There's a proper, di proper education that was awarded by apartheid. That's well, well that, we can talk about apartheid, that, but that that's was 25 white, years that's ago. That's white supremacy. The, and I think those are the deficits that radical economic transformation wishes to engage. No, but no, no. Radical if, economic, if you gave, if you gave the, radical economic transformation a, a chance, I think no, no, it's doing the exact it would opposite. allow that black people in this country would emancipate. Radical economic The very emancipation that was not allowed by apartheid. No, it's doing the exact opposite. It's, it's destroying the education system. What you're saying sitting here is that uh, apartheid was a good thing because <laughs> it made white millionaires. <laughs> well... I, I haven't said anything close to that. Um, I'm saying that you cannot simply say if someone has wealth, that means he's a, he's a supremacist. That's, that's what Adolf Hitler said uh, about the Jews in Germany. He said these people are supremacists because, look, the average Jew in Germany has more wealth than the average German. That's what the Hutu said about the Tutsis in Rwanda. The average Tutsi has more wealth. That means they're a bunch of supremacists. Well, the white people in this country, uh, many claim, have uh, more wealth. Uh, because they absorb the land, they run the economy, because they had the defenses of apartheid on their side. That's yeah. why they're equipped, as you say. So it's got nothing to do that black with, with, with the fact that black people are perhaps mm. incapable. I think if uh, the government of apartheid ministered to only 10% of the population, of course white people had better education, because the government of apartheid simply ministered to 10% of the population. The other 90% got the worst type of education. It was mm. called Bantu education for a reason. Mm. Well, we, we can talk about the problem, but that, this, this is the whole issue with this so-called buzzword, radical economic transformation. We can talk about the problem, and I think the problem has been dissected to such a degree that it's hard to miss anything if we talk about unemployment. And yes, the, the average white person in this country uh, uh, owns more than the average black person. You would be have to be blind to, to, uh, to uh, pretend that that's not the case. But the question is not what is the problem. The question is what is the solution to the problem. And the solution to the problem cannot be having more aggressive government regulation, depriving people of the right to own private property, um, having government own land, because that's what land reform is really about, having government own everything and people being able to use government property. That's what the Republic of North Korea is doing. That's what's happened in Venezuela before they crashed the economy. The only real solution to poverty and unemployment in this country and inequality is really to invest in the education system. I mean, there's been polls. That polls have been done about schools that are mostly attended by white people as opposed to schools that are mostly attended by black people. In the so-called white schools, the, the teacher attendance is about seven hours per day. In the average black school, it's 3.5 hours, three and a half hours a day. So there's an enormous crisis in terms of education in this country. And it goes uh, from basic education, it goes to tertiary education. And then we have all these government regulation policies that makes it difficult for people to start businesses. I heard the leader of the DA say in parliament that uh, radical economic transformation will not work in South Africa because... Uh, it hasn't worked in countries such as uh, Venezuela. Mm. And my question is always, how do you know unless you've given it a chance? <laughs> uh, but l let's look away from radical economic transformation, yeah. Mr. Roots. I think you've made your point uh, yeah. perfectly clear that you don't believe in radical economic transformation and you don't believe in the emancipation of black people in no, this no, country. No, no. Those, are two, those, two are, those two are opposites. Let's talk about Afri Forum. Yes. Um, you've recently we believe in the emancipation of black people, but we don't believe in radical economic transformation because the two are not the same. Uh, you, you recently absorbed uh, Mr. Harry Nell yeah. into your organization, appointed him as the, the head of uh, investigations. Pro private pro so private prosecutions. So the, he's the, the private uh, prosecutor. Yeah. Uh, of all the avenues that uh, a man with a reputation of Harry Nell, uh, why did he go to AfriForum? 
well, you'd have to ask Karin L why he went to Africa for him. Uh, we made an offer to him. We approached him. We said to him that this is a problem. Uh, we believe this is a problem. The fact that people who seem to be politically connected uh, are not being uh, prosecuted by the prosecuting authority. We believe that there's a big problem. There's a breach of trust. People, are, people don't trust the prosecuting authority. And uh, we believe this is something that should be done. It's, it's legal but in terms of But are you not then assuming the role of the, the NPA? No, it's not possible to assume the role of the NPA because the only way to do a private prosecution would be if, the N if someone is charged for a crime and the NPA decides, we've looked at the evidence and we've decided we're not going to prosecute this person. Only then can you do a private prosecution. You cannot prosecute whoever you want. We cannot walk down the street and start prosecuting people. We can only prosecute those people who have been charged and where the prosecuting authority have actually issued a certificate saying this person has been charged, we've looked at the evidence, we have decided we're not going to Are you prosecute. not trying to run a parallel government in that case? No, no, we believe government's the problem, not the solution. So we wouldn't want to be part of the problem by creating a parallel government. And private prosecution is not about uh, creating a parallel process. Private prosecutions can only start where government has decided We've looked at the issue, we're not going to do anything about this. Only then can you start doing private prosecution. So, so it's, it's, it's not a parallel process. The one process can only begin when the other one ends. Mm. Uh, a University of South Africa professor wrote uh, a, a paper and uh, called it uh, the Kheri Nell Exposition uh, and stated that Kheri Nell would leave with documents, perhaps even mental documents, of cases that he failed to prosecute within the NPA. And those people would possibly be black leaders. And he would now use Afri Forum to settle old scores. Uh, Afri Forum is known to be perhaps an anti-black or a pro-Afrikaans movement, as, as you've said. Yeah. Is, 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 I didn't is, say anti-black. Is, 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 is Kheri Nell going to use this opportunity to, to settle old scores or to fight your political battles? Well, uh, I don't think there's room for Kheri Nell to use this opportunity to have his own personal agenda because he's part of an organization. Um, so we look at certain criteria in deciding who will be prosecuted privately. Uh, and so he does have a political agenda because Afri Forum is very much a political organization. Well, not in terms of prosecutions. If he uh, works for Afri Forum, mm. he has then got a political well, mandate. Afri Forum is not a Mr. Kherinel has said that uh, he Afri doesn't, he doesn't have a political agenda, but he works for a, a pro-Afrikaans uh, political group. Your concerns are no, very it's not political. Poli How do you define political? It's not a, we're not affiliated with any political party. We're not represented in parliament. Uh, we're a pressure group. Is Greenpeace a political party? I don't think so. Is the Treatment Action Campaign a political group? Is the Right to Know Campaign a political group? These are all NGOs. Uh, an NGO is not... You can have issues... You can look at the broader definition of politics, which basically includes everything. And you can say, yes, you have, every single person in this country has political views. But AfriForum is a pressure group. It's a non-governmental organization. We don't, we're not aligned with any political party. Yes, there are some parties with which we agree more and some with which we disagree more, but we've disagreed with all parties. So what it's are not the a political group. What are the parties that you agree more with? Well, that would depend on what issue we are talking about. Um, we, as AfriForum, is a, a Christian organization to start with. Uh, I don't think you're a Christian organization. I think that you state that you uphold Christian values. That's more correct, yes. yes. That's more correct. Um, I think we, for example, agreed... It seems like there's a shift now in the DA where the DA is starting to, to change uh, some of its policies to, to be more orientated towards what the ANC is saying. That's what it looks like to us. So we disagree with that. We agreed with some of the earlier policies. So you disagreed on, on with the, the DA... Uh, partnering or in a, coming into a coalition government with the EFF? I wouldn't be able to say if we disagree with that because probably yes, but that's coalition politics and we, we, that's completely out of AfriForum's sphere. So I think if you are a political party and you are not the government or you are one of the smaller parties, having coalitions is the way to be a party. That's why we're not a political party because we, we don't want to go into that a arena. We w don't ever want to be in a coalition with the EFF. So um, we don't have to because we're not a political Did party. Did you recruit uh, Mr. Paul O'Sullivan as an no. investigator for uh, AFRI Forum? No.
No. Uh, Paul O'Sullivan has done some work for AfriForum. Uh, Are you willing as, to share as, what that work As was? a freelancer. Yes, he wrote a report which is called the um, Joining the Dots, uh, which is about corruption in government, uh, which he actually wrote and he, uh, with AfriForum and he published the report as an AfriForum report for which he was contracted to draft. He's not an employee of every forum. Uh, we've had, I think, two press conferences with him about corruption, but uh, we're not officially, we're not affiliated with him, um, so to and speak. And how would he then join the dots? Uh, he would you have to use the resources of uh, every forum? No, he actually used his own resources. He, his own resources. Paul O'Sullivan is a, um, a forensic investigator. So he's done some private investigating, and he drew up a report. And he came to Afri Forum and he said, uh, listen, I've done this, Let's, uh, this is a report about... I think it's in the public domain that uh, Mr. Paul O'Sullivan has also participated in some un unethical activities within uh, his investigations. How do you then, as Afri Forum, uh, work with a man like that? How what? do you uh, approach him for business, uh, approach him for work, mm. as you say, he's uh, compiled a report mm. for you? Well, I'm, um, I'm not does, sure. Does he, does he perpetuate a, a narrative that you enjoy? Well, I'm not sure what you are referring to when you say unethical uh, activities, but he's not an employee of Afri Forum. He's, he's, you can compare him more with a freelancer. Uh, and we don't screen people to see if we agree with everything that they've ever done in their lives before we work with him. We look at, do we agree on this particular issue? So we've worked with many people who've said and done things that we've disagreed with, including the ANC. We've, uh, we've uh, was it last year when the, these campus riots were taking place? Together with the ANC, we had a press conference uh, about addressing this issue. Does that mean that we agree with everything the ASE, ANC has ever said and done? No. So uh, we don't do screenings about people before, um, before we work with them. And you did not screen Mr. Kherinel? Well, Kherinel is an employee, so... He, he went through an, a process of being appointed. Uh, he had an interview and there was a, pro, a human resources process. Um, so he's an employee of AfriForum other than, than Paul O'Sullivan, Mr. for Paul example. Sullivan. Yeah. Okay. And that's where we leave it tonight, uh, Ms. Roos. I hope you'll come back. I have I a lot to talk to you about. Yeah. yeah. And that's where we leave it, uh, uh, South Africa. Radical economic transformation. Uh, AfriForum says it doesn't believe in radical economic transformation. But many do say it is the only way to emancipate the lives of black South Africans. Uh, thank you for watching tonight. I am C. Fiso Matlang. Pray for South Africa. See you next time and good night.